Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. We're also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com and broadcasting to you from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios. All right, for the next two segments, I've got Ron Dutt, CEO of Flux Power Holdings, the symbol F-U-L-X. If you take a look at that chart, you're going to really, really like it. All right, Ron, welcome to the show. Thank you for showing up. Appreciate it. Thanks, Michael. Glad to be on your show. All right. You are uh, uh, taking charge of, of one of the leading causes of, of, of enterprise growth and turmoil, energy, and you're doing it through, through your company. Let me back up a minute. If you would uh, give our audience a feel for you, a little bit of a background on you, and then that we get into, get into your company. Yeah, sure. No, listen, my background is uh, primarily financial. I, I have been CFO of three public companies, larger public companies, and EVP of uh, three companies, and, and run operations and, and most functions in the company. Uh, I've been at Ford. Some other names you might recognize are Visa, the credit card, DHL, Americas. I was CFO there, package delivery, Fritz now a division of UPS uh, directed at Electronics and Sola. Um, and I have had, uh, other than those big companies, some consulting and COO roles in a couple startups in the past few years. So I'm, so I'm um, successfully bridging that gap. Uh, been in companies from high growth uh, to turnaround. And um, I guess the last thing I'd say, I, you know, I've got a degree in chemistry, which is relevant to energy and an MBA in finance. All right. Now, that's certainly enough to make this thing go. You have a restart on your hands with Flux. Tell me about it. Sure. The company was started in 2009 um, by its founder, uh, Chris Anthony, and uh, um, they targeted uh, batteries for electric vehicles. That was all the rage in 2009, 2010, and he had come off another startup with that where he um, was able to develop a lot of patents and saw the opportunity there. Um, they, they, uh, so they targeted uh, some, some niche customers in that area, and unfortunately there's a lot of consolidation and the customers the company had didn't make it. Our product performed well, but they didn't make it. So a year ago, we had to um, uh, restructure the company, repath it, and um, our, our, our goal was to sell a product where we didn't have to rely on the equipment being adopted. And um, most of the people with the battery management technology that we had were, were chasing cars and big trucks and, and the bigger fish. Um, we decided to chase the industrial uh, equipment uh, where, the, where there was uh, really no competition in this in this. Uh, um, product. All right. Well, somebody really likes your stock because it's moved from five cents to nineteen cents in a very short period of time. So w w that shift is obviously reflecting in in greater share uh, shareholder value. Uh, let's let's talk about the material handling part of your business. I mean, br bring that out for us for a minute. Yeah, sure. Uh, industrial equipment is, is a huge area. Uh, most people don't know about it. They they know about cars, but Everything from forklifts, uh, there are all kinds of different types of forklifts and warehouses and other material handling areas, tug and tow equipment. All of those um, uh, use lead acid batteries or propane, and uh, about half of them are lead acid uh, batteries typically. Um, and there's nobody else really selling, selling uh, the lithium product, and the, the, the lithium product will replace those uh, lead acid batteries uh, and they're better, better, cheaper, and there's an installed base. Um, the other thing is these these uh, large companies with a lot of this equipment manage all their equipment on a fleet management basis. So our our, our selling to them is just not a one-off sale here and there. So it's addressing their fleet needs. Brilliant. So you're into a, a market that really has got little attention. So there's very little competition for what you do. And then when it comes to the product you provide, you're you're in another category all your own because nobody else is making the the the, the lithium batteries that you're making. How did you? I mean, the, uh, you're, it sounds like you're going to own your own, your own space. Well, 
we 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 have an open playing field right now. I fully expect others to 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 get this. Uh, um, the opportunities there, I think, once we showcase that. Uh, we'll have other players in it. I would actually like some other players in it. I mean, it's there's a there's a million pieces of new equipment sold each year, and and I'd like someone else to help us with our marketing and and education on on what a, a lithium based uh, energy pack battery pack can do in this industry. Okay. All right. Well, so they'll show up soon enough. I know once you once they start seeing what's going on with you. Let's let's if we can. We've got plenty of time here in this segment. Let's look under the hood a little bit because, if you will, tell us about the secret sauce of you know your battery management system and and, and their design. And then, if we have time, you know, a couple of highlights on some of the products. Sure, sure. Um, the company was started in two thousand nine, uh, um, and uh, it had about nine to twelve, actually about twenty patents. In terms of the uh, circuit boards, uh, the wiring, uh, the software, the firmware to manage cells, these lithium cells, these large format cells. If you, they're more expensive, but they have a much longer life and outperform lead acid. Um, the, the the key is you've got to manage these batteries. You've got to ensure that they they charge properly. The the cells are all balanced. Uh, the, the you manage the state of charge, you don't undercharge, overcharge to ensure you get a longer life. And so our battery management system does that, and it, and it, and it does it um, automatically, really, for, for the user. Um, others have uh, a battery management system. A couple years ago, um, our company was saying, we don't, we're the only ones that have one a battery management system that, that really really works. Uh, so we have been state-of-the-art um, with this battery management system, but we know, we know there are a lot of players who are constantly innovating and building their technology. So so are we. We're, on our, we're working on our third generation. As we learn more about our customers, um, it's like any manufacturing, anybody has been in manufacturing, you know, you are uh, continually looking at design improvements, what the customer really wants, what they don't need, uh, in an effort to provide the lowest cost uh, alternative and, and provide those features uh, that they need. Our, in addition to that, I'd say on a, a longer-term sustainable basis, as the technology becomes more mature, our really secret sauce is application engineering, which we've proven and have some really very happy customers uh, that we work well with to figure out how to get our packs into their piece of equipment because all the pieces of equipment out there, or most of them, have, have different sizes, dimensions, power needs, and, and different use. So Give we work with them to uh, provide solutions to them. Give me an, a for example. Uh, well, you know, in the, in the lift equipment, there's the uh, s smaller piece of equipment called a uh, walkie. You walk behind, it's self-propelled, it's got a fork lift on it, and it lifts equipment. And there's about 60,000 of those um, uh, sold per year. Um, then there's the ride-on, which is another class. There are actually six classes of, of equipment, um, which requires much more integration of packs with the ride-on. Um, there's also a stand-on version, which is a class three. So as we, and each manufacturer, uh, uh, can have different dimensions. So we, our plan is to sell to all the major manufacturers and some of the manufacturers have a, we have to put our cells in a steel, uh, enclosure and that may require of a different dimension. Uh, and some other different specs that integrate with the equipment. Hmm. Let's let's do this. Let's take a break now and uh, talk about all of the other things. That, I will let you have questions for you uh, again. But before we go, you have contact information for the investors that are listening to the show to, to call in and find more information. Please give it to us now. Yeah, sure. You know, if you just Google Flux Power, you'll come right to our site, which is fluxpwr.com. Uh, the contact phone number is 877-505-3589. All right, Ron, we'll be right back on the other side of this break, all right? 
Thanks, Michael. All right. We'll be right back with Ron Dutt, CEO of Flux Power Holdings, and special thanks to Monk Media and 1-800-PublicRelations.com for all their PR and media support. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. We're also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com and broadcasting to you from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios. All right, it's my pleasure to bring on Ron Dutt, CEO, Flex Power Holdings, symbol FLUX. All right, uh, Ron, when we left off, we had a whole bunch of things and we really rapid fired through those. But you being in California, uh, you actually have a Texas connection. Tell me about that. Yeah, we do, and it, it's surprising, and it, it, it's interesting. <clears throat> this call <clears throat> is <clears throat> coming out of Texas. <clears throat> um, recall that uh, most of you bought laptops and cell phones, and uh, particularly in the early, late 80s, all, all those uh, uh, were powered by lithium polymers uh, cells and, and still are. Uh, there was a lithium cobalt in that uh, Boeing plane you probably read about, and but that was lighter and had uh, was subject to combustion. In 1996, at the University of Texas in Austin, which I think most of you have heard of before, uh, one of the researchers uh, developed lithium iron phosphate, and that has become the um, uh, the chemistry of choice for electrolyte in these uh, cells. It's the safest has the most cost-effective uh, parameters weight-wise and energy uh, density. So uh, I guess we uh, Flux needs to thank the University of Texas for that one. Yes, definitely. Uh, we're, we're also uh, one of the, uh, already started selling to one of your largest equipment dealers uh, located in Fort Worth called Chapas, and they're in uh, uh, num- nine or so locations in Texas and Missouri, uh, and we're just very pleased to be working with them. In fact, we just gave them a quote on a on another uh, significant uh, large customer they have today, so it's very timely. Uh, they are they've been a regular winner of the President's Award, the highest award that the Toyota Material Handling uh, gives out, and they've done that for many many years. So. Uh, they're a proven player, and um, I love working with people who really know what they're doing. Um, Pepsi had an annual show last week in San Antonio. If anybody's listening from San Antonio, their annual supplier show, and Toyota uh, introduced our pack to that whole show last week and went extremely well. So uh, Flex like San Antonio as well. Uh, and, and lastly, our our largest shareholder, who's been here from the beginning and has had the face from day one, is uh, lives in Corpus Christi. So, thanks to Texas, plenty of reason to come back out here and start taking taking part of our down home um, atmosphere. All right, mm-hmm. we got to do. We got to get you out here and get you into the studio now. Um, I understand that you also have some products that are um, early phase of industry review and testing. So walk us through through some of that, and I think what didn't uh, Toyota just give you the good housekeeping seal of approval also? Yeah, um, less than two weeks ago we, we announced in a press release that uh, Toyota had done that. They had uh, given us uh, their approval to uh, put our uh, packs in their equipment that they sell uh, nationally. And uh, it was, we had to be careful to say, yeah. uh, it's not an endorsement. Toyota, Toyota doesn't like to go there as most large companies don't want to do that. But this, this was a, a, a real uh, game changer for us. We had been, um, um, uh, approaching a, a number of the dealerships and, and they were going to order. And then they said, well, we actually need that Toyota approval. So I think, I think we've got the, uh, the guns gone off at the starting line here. Um, we've had people, dealers, um, uh, say that um, what you're doing is going to revolutionize this industry, this uh, forklift or lift equipment industry. Uh, we have uh, our packs in one large customer in Florida right now who their, their people working with our packs said, why, why doesn't all of our equipment have these flux battery packs uh, on them? So we're getting a, a very good uh, initial response. Uh, we are in the uh, early phase of this uh, rollout. Uh, we're a public company, so you can see our financials. So you probably 
um, those financials are, are uh, lag a little bit the, the actual revenue, but you'll start to see the revenue um, uh, build. Um, we sell through equipment dealers and battery uh, distributors, and we are building out that network across the country. We've got we've got we're getting our foot in eight states right now, and uh, really working on on this early phase of building that out because. We will introduce it to them and train their salespeople, and then they will sell to their uh, customers. That that sounds great. Do you have uh, hopes and aspirations for an international market, also? You know, it's it, it, it's ripe for that. I mean, uh, Toyota. We we have a excellent relationship with Toyota. Their national headquarters is just up the road from us here, so so we get to see a good bit of them. They are number one in the lift equipment uh, industry in the U.S. and the world. Um, so there's a, a very large market here. Uh, the activities in those warehouses are the same overseas as they are here. Um, so it's uh, it's an exciting um, uh, future that we have. Oh, definitely for for not just you, but I'm sure for all the all your shareholders too. Now um, you're focused on um, converting tests and, and and initial awareness into into growing sales. This is a, a burning question. Everybody wants to know. What are you going to do in in this regard? Well, you know, the uh, with the lift equipment, there's a sales cycle, and 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 we send out demonstration units so people can try these. Everybody wants to try it. It's a new product, looks different, works different, um, and and uh, we're working on that, and then training the sales force of these of the these dealerships. Uh, our big thing is getting credibility. Um, Everybody is an early adapter, although we've had some. Some are, and, and but, but many aren't. So our sales and marketing plan is, is very focused on, on uh, addressing that sales cycle and build, building out uh, uh, the network. We're also uh, working with several large Fortune um, uh, 100, 500 companies, and um, we hope to get a case study out of them because when you're introducing a new product, there's nothing better than... than, than uh, you know the testimonials and the example of what it's done uh, for some, for household names. All right, so um, you, you, let me let me jump in here for a second because you're starting to amaze me here. You got little or no competition in the market sector that you're you're, you're going after, and really, there's no competition on the man, manufacturing side of of your product. So give our I mean that that says a lot now, but give our audience the 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 idea, the dollar amount of the market sector you're going after, let's say just because you mentioned this before, uh, pallets and trucks alone. I mean, so they get an idea what revenue stream could grow to with you being in the front of, of this industry sector. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the one we're focused on most heavily right now is this lift equipment, and, and that's about a $600 million opportunity if for that lift equipment, and that's just the class three. It's the walkies and the and and the um, uh, um, stand on uh, units. Um, the the ride on units are another comparable size uh, market. We are also because our packs work, and whether the equipment has a forklift and lifts, there's a whole other segment called tug and tow that we're already working with um, uh, right now, and that's a, a similar size opportunity. Um, and we are also um, bidding with the military integrations to take our packs and put them on wheels uh, for troops uh, that are in uh, remote operations. And we also have a bid out for a, a stationary grid project with the Marines in the state of New York, which looks very promising, and also to have many follow-ons where you take our cells and battery management system and you just line them up in series in a big rack for energy storage system in those larger uh, grid applications. Now, I'm sure these people that are, are moving forward with you are not just doing it because it's something new and they want to be an early adopter of technology. There's, co- there's got to be some kind of cost savings involved, otherwise nobody switches, but stuff like this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our packs, and it's because of the, because of the chemistry, it lasts three to five times longer than lead acid. Uh, Argonne National Lab, some of you may have heard that, have done that, have done that testing and validation. You know, it just isn't us. Uh, the, the cells have longer run times because of the chemistry, up to 
up to, depending on use, 25%, and then they maintain a higher state of charge throughout that whole time versus uh, lead acid. There's no maintenance. So, so what, this, what those drive to is that the cost over the life of the truck, you put these packs in a truck, and it's going to be, uh, depending on use, up to half the cost. Wow. Uh, so that's very compelling to these fleets in particular. 50% cost reduction. That is a right. good note to end on. Now, we've got to go, but please, one more time, contact information for you, for our audience to reach out to you. Yes, it's, uh, again, uh, just Google Flux Power. The site is F-L-U-X. PWR.com. Our ticker symbol, we're public, is FLUX. The phone number is 877-505-3589. Ron, you've been a great guest. I want you to come back and give us a report, a progress report, as we get down the road. Love to, Michael. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Ron Dutt, CEO of Flux Power Holdings, FLUX symbol. And special thanks to Monk Media and 1-800-PublicRelations.com for all their media and PR support. We'll be right back on the other side of this break, and we're going to come back with Mervyn Price. He's the old friend of the show. He's been here a lot, and he brought with him a special guest. We're going to talk to Crystal Haig Morris. This lady is known for turning things around and making them work right when she gets on deck. We'll be right back. 